What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the K Reviews Podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Moss, a rapper and recording artist out of Reno, Nevada. Um, If you want to check out my latest mixtape that just dropped, be sure to go check the link in the description below. I also dropped another album earlier this year. Please go check that one out as well. Um, But enough about me. Today, we're going to be ranking um, every album from the rapper who, in my opinion, is the greatest to ever do it. Nas, um, yeah, and, and Nas has a lot of albums, man. Um, twenty in total, twenty solo albums, and then one collab album. Well, nineteen solo albums, and then one collab album with uh, Damian Marley, which I will be talking about all twenty of those in this video today. But I don't want to waste any time, man. I, I want to get right into it, um, and just start start getting these videos ranked or start getting these albums ranked. My apologies. At number twenty, um. We got Nostradamus, and it should be no surprise that this album is this low. I do think this album gets slightly overhated, given the commotion that surrounded it. You know, the fact that it was supposed to be the second disc of the I Am Nostradamus um, double album that Nas was working on, and that ended up getting leaked. And, you know, in the 90s, it was a much bigger deal when things got leaked. Um, So kind of left Nas and the record label in a sticky scenario where they kind of had to scramble to recreate the album it ended up being two separate albums rather than one big double album and the concept of the album kind of got lost amidst all of the reworking um and a lot of really really great songs got lost amidst all of the reworking and we were left with an album that is just really underwhelming when compared to the rest of Nas's discography that being said there's still songs on here that um i think are worth mentioning i think songs like some of us have angels project windows with ronald isley especially i think that would be looked at as one of the better songs in Nas's career had it not been on this album because i think it's a phenomenal phenomenal song come get me with the dj premiere beat um there was some hits from this one like you owe me did come from this album that was a pretty big hit and when nas played it at the concert it actually went kind of crazy but um yeah man nostradamus just uh, due to things outside of nas's control just just isn't up to par with the rest of his discography and i think he's aware of that and i think um I think most people are aware of that. I think this is the general consensus that this is probably the worst album in Nas's discography. Um, But that being said, it is still better than a lot of other rappers' um, best album. So, you know, everything is relative. Um, At number 19, just above Nostradamus, I have Streets Disciple, um, released in 2004. And... You know, Streets Disciple, I think if it was cut down to the 16 best tracks, would be a pretty solid Nas album. Um, But just that second disc, man, to me, it just, it's hard to get through the whole thing. Um, And I'm a a huge Nas fan. Like, I would take a Nas double album almost any day of the week. Um, But but this one just didn't quite live up to my expectations of what a Nas double album could be. Um, Yeah, man, I I mean, the second, second disc here just has a lot of, there's a stretch from... Man, really, for the most part, most of the second disc until we get to um, bridging the gap. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of um, some of my least favorite Nas tracks. But then again, you know, I, I do think there are solid Nas tracks that come from here. Nazareth Savage is a really good song that comes from here. These are our heroes is a really good song that comes from here. Um, Rest of my life, just a moment, reason, um, war, me and you, and thief theme. I think those are. St- some incredible incredible Nas songs and that's why I say if this was trimmed down it would probably be a little bit higher on this list um because those songs I, I named are all really really great and and all make this album worthwhile to at least go check out um even though it is so low in this ranking but yeah just too bloated of an album but um nonetheless still still worthy contributions um every Nas album has some worthy worthy contributions and, and great songs that come from it so e- even his worst ones Um, yeah, so still some great songs that come from this one. At number 18, Above Streets Disciple, I had, oh, oh, I'm blanking. That's not good. Oh, at number 18, Above Streets Disciple, I had Nasir, the collaboration album with Kanye West. And a common thing um, amongst these albums at the bottom of this ranking, specifically in regards to, um, Nostradamus and this album is that uh, they're not that great because it was uh, for reasons out of Nas's control. Um, 
you know, this one was rushed immensely. Again, not in Nas's control. I completely, by Kanye's doing, at least that's what is being told around the music world, is that um, Kanye rushed Nas to the point where even on the way to the listening party, Nas was still recording final portions of the album, which uh, that's just that's that's just mind blowing to me. Um, that you know, this is a, a professional album between two of the greatest artists of all time, and Kanye expected Nas to rush and finish it um, on the way to the listening party. I th- I think that's kind of ridiculous. Um, and if it is true, if that rumor is true. You know, you can kind of hear it when you listen to the album. The album doesn't sound fully fleshed out um, and well thought out as a Nas album typically would. That being said, man, it's pretty impressive that it was as rushed as it was and it still came out as solid as it did. In my opinion, I think this album gets overhated. Um, Cop Shot the Kid is really good. White Label is pretty solid. Um, It's short. It definitely is unfocused and it definitely feels rushed. But um, with all of that being considered, I think it came out pretty solid um but yes nonetheless still still uh one of the lower ones ranked here um we're gonna get into number 17 now number 17 i have the lost tapes 2 um and this was a project that i really hated when it first came out in fact it was i was like calling it his worst album when it first came out um but it's definitely warmed up to me a little bit since then there's definitely songs on it that um i go back to now and i actually kind of like no bad energy i don't think is bad lost freestyle is good tanasia is good who are you is good war against love the art of it um so there's definitely some songs on here that you know i ended up returning to and coming around to and this album as a whole i don't dislike as much as i did I, I just see it as a solid nas album now more so than just um a very underwhelming nas album now was it a disappointment definitely it was definitely a big disappointment um as is common with a lot of these albums here at the bottom of this ranking there was high expectations for him um that just weren't met this one had high expectations because as you'll see where it's ranked later on in this video i absolutely love the first lost tapes and yeah, man, it just it was a, it was definitely a disappoint disappointment to me to see a sequel to one of my favorite Nas projects and have it be um, just just very underwhelming, um, at least for me. So that that's why I have it ranked here at number seventeen. At number sixteen, I have Life Is Good, um, and this might seem very low for a lot of people. A lot of people saw Life Is Good as like a comeback album for Nas. Um, Like, maybe they weren't a fan of everything from 2004 up through, like, 2010. Um, And this was kind of a comeback album for them. I disagree, man. I think a lot of those albums during that stretch, um, prior to this one coming out, I actually like more than than Life is Good. Um, I don't think Life is Good is a bad album by any means. I think it's a very, very solid Nas album. Um, But just when I compare it to these other ones, there's just things that I can personally grab more from the other ones that just make the other ones connect a little bit more with me than um, this one is. So, yeah, that's that's just kind of where I stand on Life is Good. It, it might be a low ranking for a lot of people, but it's just not an album that I, I really go back to. Um, I think it's the production. The production sound, like the sound of the production just doesn't mesh well with, with my taste. Um, that being said, there's still songs from here, you know, uh, No Introduction, Locomotive, um, Daughters, um, Back When stay cherry wine there's still really 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 good songs on here this is still a very solid Nas album i don't want its low ranking to like to make it seem like i don't um i don't think this is a good album i do think life is good is a really good album i just of Nas's good albums um it is just one that i go back to the least it's one that resonates with me the least um but yeah so we're going to get into the top 15 now, and I got to say, Nas's top 15 albums are absolutely incredible. It might just be the best top 15 in hip-hop. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, let's just jump right into it. At number 15, I got Untitled, released in 2008. Um, and this was an album that was originally had a different title, but the record, I don't know if it was the record label or if it was the stores or what, but they weren't going to let Nas... Um, title the album what he originally wanted to title it which if you don't know the original title you can do some research on that yourself um but he ended up just going with untitled for the title of the album since they wouldn't let him do it and 
Um, this album is a great, great album. I think some people were turned off by the production on it, um, which it's not the best produced Nas album, but I do think that there is some very good beats on here. Um, and I do, I do think it's some very unique sounds that Nas is uh, choosing to rap over. Like Queens Get the Money is a very unique track to start off the album um, for Nas. I think a track like Testify with that sample is really, really beautiful production wise. So I definitely think there's, I definitely think the production on this album gets over hated. Um, and as far as subject matter goes, it is one of the most focused and, um, I guess, um, consciously important albums in Nas's discography. He was talking about a lot of important issues that were very prevalent at the time this album came out and are still very prevalent now. Um, but yeah, as far as me personally, I wouldn't put it above the 14 albums that I have above it, but I do think it's a very, very, very good album, and that's why it makes it into the top 15 here. Um, and I know a lot of people really love this album. This album has a mixed, is a mixed bag on as, as far as people's opinion on it. Some people really, really love this album, put it as like one of Nas's best. I know Mike Seatown from Dead End Hip Hop is one of those guys, really, really loves Untitled. Um... But, you know, there's other people who just really don't like Untitled and seem to rank it towards the bottom of his discography. So it, it's a very volatile as as how as far as how people view this album. But I, I nonetheless think it's a really good album. I would put it at number 15 on my personal ranking. At number 14, we got Hip Hop is Dead, um, released in 2006, coming out right before Untitled. And... Hip Hop is Dead is des definitely like a very nostalgic album for me. It's a personal favorite of mine. When I was a kid, um, Hip Hop is Dead was actually one of the Nas albums. That <coughs> Yo, you good, bro? Hip Hop is Dead is actually one of the albums that was like one of my favorite Nas albums when I was a kid. Um, I don't know why, but seeing him and Jay Z link up with Black on Black Republican was really cool. Um, who killed it was was such an interesting story, and I I still to this day even like the noir voice that he does on there. Um, still dreaming with Kanye was really cool. I I don't know what it was about this album, but something about like the nocturnal like dark darker atmosphere to this album just really drew me into it as a kid. Which which sounds strange. You you know you you think you'd be drawn to the more brighter stuff as a kid, not the, not the more darker or melancholic sounding stuff. But um, yeah, as a kid, this album really resonated with me. And I think that's why I ended up putting it above uh, Untitled and Life is Good and a couple other albums that I think people, most people probably perceive as better than Hip Hop is Dead. Um, I personally just like Hip Hop is Dead a little bit more. So at number 14, I have Hip Hop is Dead. At number 13, we've got... So at number 13 was actually a very, it was actually a difficult decision for me between which album was going to go at 13 and which album was going to go at 12. Um, the one I ultimately ended up putting at 13 was King's Disease, the first one. Um, this clearly by its ranking is to me the, my least favorite in the Nas and Hit Boy run. Um, and nonetheless, still a really, really, really good album. Um, really, really good album. The fact that an album this good is ranked at number 13 in Nas's discography should just tell you how incredible Nas's discography is at this point. Um, but yeah, man, King's Disease, the title track, Blue Benz, Car 85, Ultra Black, 27 Summers, Replace Me, um, you know, 10 Points, The Cure. This this album is full of songs that are really, really, really good. Um just not one of my personal favorites. I do go back to it, listen to it here and there, but I'm, I'm not bumping it like crazy like I am a lot of the albums that I have ahead of it. I got it at number 13. The album I was wrestling with, um, with that one, between which one I wanted to have ranked above above the other one, was I Am, released in 1999. And this was the first, this is the one that came out before Nostradamus that was supposed to originally be um, a double album as well. So this album definitely saw a little bit of the hit from the double album leaking, but not as bad as Nostradamus did. Um, this one didn't get hit as bad. I mean, overall, I still think it's a great album. There's definitely songs that I skip on here. I skip, um, I skip Doctor Knockboot. I skip Big Things, and I skip K I S S I N G. But every other song on this album, I really, 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 really like. And um, you know, it's actually impressive to me that this isn't in Nas's top ten albums anymore. It's actually impressive to me that he's done so much. Um, 
so much work in this decade, in this 2020s decade, to knock this one out of the top 10 now. Um, that It's just insanely impressive to me. But, um, yeah, man, some of his best songs come from this. Nas is Like, um, Undying Love, Money is My Bitch, New York State of Mind Part 2. Um, some of his most popular songs come from this, like Hate Me Now. Um, so, yeah, I am very, very good album. I have it ranked at number 12. Number 11, I have his collab album with Damian Marley, Distant Relatives. Um, I actually really, really, really enjoy this album. I'm not super big into reggae. I don't want to act like I am, but whenever I play this album, I enjoy every song. I enjoy every song on this album. Um, I will say what I enjoy about this album is Damian Marley more so than Nas, which is why it's not in the top 10. Uh, the top 10 Nas albums... I felt like needed to be 10 albums where I'm there for Nas. And, um, you know, this album, I'm, when I go listen to it, I'm not really there for Nas. I'm there for Damian Marley. I'm, I'm there for the album as a whole. Um, and I don't think Nas's contributions are bad or anything. It's not like I would prefer the album without Nas or anything like that. But it just didn't feel right to put this in the top 10 um, based on the fact that it definitely it definitely feels more like a Damian Marley lead album than a Nas lead album um, but nonetheless a phenomenal album I really enjoy every single track on it I would highly recommend it if if you haven't heard it people sleep on this album heavy um, it's a great album and without without further ado man here we are we're at the top 10 um, this is the fun part of the video this is where we talk about the albums that like I really really love um, and let's just get right into it at number 10 I have Magic 2 releasing this year 2023 um, with Hit Boy and this is my second to least favorite uh, of the Nas and Hit Run, but that doesn't mean it's not a phenomenal album. I don't skip a single song here. Um, every Whenever I play this album, I play it front to back. I don't skip nothing. Um, it's not as great as the other nine here, and that's the only reason why it's at 10. Um, I love it. I think it's a great album. I, I played it a crap ton since it came out this year, but... Um, it just doesn't have quite the highs of the other albums, of these other nine albums that I have in front of it. It's just a super consistent body of work that you can play without skipping. Um, but nonetheless, it's not like any of Nas's best songs come from this album, so I couldn't put it higher than 10. Uh, at number nine, we have Magic 3. Magic 3 also came out this year, two months after Magic 2, and... Um, I just think it's slightly better than Magic 2. If you if you watched my 2023 top 10 albums of 2023 ranking, then you know that I actually had Magic 3 above slightly above Magic 2, and so it's going to be the same case here. Um, yeah, man, I think this just has a little bit more of the highs than Magic 2 does. I think Never Die, I think based on true events with the two back-to-backs, um, Speechless Part 2... Um, I love this feeling superhero and that run that run in the beginning from fever through. I love this feeling those first four tracks. That's that's a, a phenomenal way to kick off the album. Um, yeah, I just think Magic 3 just feels a little bit more bigger, a little bit greater. I think it's going to be remembered greater in Nas's discography than Magic 2. And so that's why I have it above Magic 2 at number nine. Um, so at number eight, also, I, I forgot to mention We've got all three primes of Nas represented on the wall here. We got his 90s prime, we got his 2000s prime, and we got his 2020s prime. So, um, yeah, I, I have every, almost every album by Nas on vinyl. So I was like, I got to do this. I got to do this for the video. Um, where was I? Number eight, Godson. I have Godson at number eight. And some people might think this is low. I know a lot of people who see Godson as like, like one of Nas's best best albums and when I was a kid I definitely it definitely was like there was a point where when I was a kid I thought this was Nas's second best album I had Illmatic and then I had Godson um so as a kid I really really loved this album songs like Get Down I mean really those first four Get Down The Cross Made You Look and Last Real and Word Alive those four to kick off an album are incredible I mean Get Down Made You Look and Last Real Alive are like three of Nas's best songs, in my opinion. Um, now, Zone Out and Hey Nas do kind of kill the vibe of the album for me. I'm not the biggest fan of either of those songs. Um, and I Can is really good. It's obviously one of the biggest hits of his career. Book of Rhymes is really good. Thug Mansion is 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 great. Mastermind Warrior. So, like, everything here 
the second half of this album is really, really good, but it just doesn't punch as hard to me as um, the album, the seven albums that I have in front of it. When I when I return to this one versus the seven albums that I have in front of this one, they just punch a little bit harder to me. They just resonate a little bit more with me. Um, but this is a beautiful album nonetheless. A song like Dance is one of the most important rap songs ever, in my opinion. Um, one of the most beautiful ballady rap songs ever in my opinion um Nas gives you a great variety of styles on this album Godson is incredible and if anybody puts it in his top five if anybody says it's their favorite Nas album I'm not mad at it man like I fully understand where they're coming from it's it's an incredible incredible album um yeah at number seven might be controversial that I put this above Godson but I'm, I'm just being honest with you know, when I return to this album, it just really resonates with me for some reason. I really love this album. Um, but King's Disease 2, man. I got King's Disease 2 at 7. And something about King's Disease 2, I I, I don't know. It, it's it's the most, maybe like the most modern or trappy that Nas has ever sounded. And I wouldn't think that I would like that, but something about it just really resonates with me. Tracks like The Pressure, Death Row East, 40 Side, EPMD2, Rare, YKTV, Store Run, Moments, Nobody. Those first nine tracks, crazy, crazy, crazy run. And the last four to close out the album, Count Me In, Composure, My Bible, and Nas is Good. All incredible as well. Though I mean, No Phony Love and Brunch on Sundays, they're not bad songs, but they're songs that I occasionally might skip when I listen to the album. But everything surrounding those two songs, I love so much. Um that yeah man i got to put it this high i have to put it this high i just love this album so much i've been playing the crap out of it these past couple of years um songs like nobody moments store run are some of my favorite death row east those are some of my favorite nas songs ever rare the way nas was rapping on rare composure yeah man this uh, king's disease 2 is amazing man it's amazing i would definitely put it um at number 7 i think it's a great album um and so now we got at number six, I'm going to go ahead, and again, it might be a controversial ranking where I put this one. A lot of people put this as a top five Nas album, a top three Nas album, um, but I got Stillmatic at number six. Um, Stillmatic is great. It's a classic. It is one of the most important albums in Nas discography, but I'm not here to rank things based off of how classic they are or how important they are. Um, I'm here to rank them based off of how much I personally enjoy them, and Based off that criteria, Stillmatic just barely is outside of the top five. But, I mean, the intro is incredible. Ether, obviously one of the greatest diss tracks ever. Got Yourself a Gun, amazing. Smoking, amazing. You're the Man, amazing. Rewind, amazing. Did I put this too low? I might have put this too low. One Mic, amazing. Second Childhood, amazing. Like, whole whole album front to back um, is really, really great. Stillmatic, man. Um, a classic. A classic for real. And I might have put it too low putting it at six, but... I'm being honest, the five albums that I have in my top five are my five personal favorite Nas albums. Like, if I was being stuck on an island and I could only bring five Nas albums with me, the five that I put in my top five are the five that I'm bringing. Um, it's just incredible to me that an album as good as Stillmatic isn't part of those five. Um, but nonetheless, man, Stillmatic at six, absolute classic. Feel free to yell at me in the comments below about how I have it too low, but yeah, man. Number five. Uh, released in 2021, I have the first Magic with Hit Boy, and this album is it's like it's like a modern. It's, it's gonna sound crazy what I'm about to say, but it's like a modern day Illmatic to me. Like nine tracks, straight to the point. Every beat is fire. Every verse is fire. Um, I, I can't get enough of it, man. The, uh, the album's like crack. Magic is the first Magic is like crack. Um, Hit Boy and Nas, it was like Magic. They did their fucking thing, man. Um, and I go back to it a ton. I'm going to keep going back to it for years and years from now. I can already tell. Um, yeah, man, it is one of my favorite Nas albums for sure. Like I said, if I, if I want an Illmatic type of listen, but I want it to have a more modern sound, this is the one I throw on. Like this is yeah, exceptional, exceptional album from Nas. And, um, people are going to call me crazy putting it above Stillmatic, but in my personal opinion, I have this album above Stillmatic, man. I, I personally enjoy this album more than more than I do Stillmatic. I think every song on here is is incredible. Um, so yeah, the first Magic Man cracking in at at number five. 
Um, at number four, and this is where it got hazy. So, um, you know, ranking four through two was really difficult for me. Um, I ended up going at number four. I ended up going with the first Lost Tapes. And the first Lost Tapes is another album that I absolutely loved as a kid. I played it nonstop as a kid. And I would probably, you know, when I was younger, it was probably, you know, I was ranking it amongst God's Son um, as one of my favorite Nas albums, probably like top three, top four. And it still is top three, top four to this day. That that shows its staying power. Um, but the Lost Tapes, to me, even though it is a compilation of just unreleased songs, it sounds like a full full fleshed out album all the songs run together really well every single song all 12 of them here i think are incredible um and i think Nas is rapping his ass off man like like really like some of these verses when i listen to them i'm just like man this is an a master class in rapping um i think the what keeps me from putting the lost tapes in the top three is the fact that it is a compilation of unreleased material um the fact that it wasn't a fully honed in and planned out project um as is um just lends me to favor the other three that i have above it but as far as just pure quality goes man you can make a case that outside of illmatic this is quality of the rhymes wise maybe Nas is best um i mean i mean the verses on on the lost tapes are incredible and fetus papa was a player purple um no ideas original do rags some of Nas's best best songs some of my favorite favorite Nas songs come from this project so The Lost Tapes, clocking in at number four. At number three, and this is where it's going to get really controversial, um, I have It Was Written at number three. And so if you guys, by way of deduction, you know what the top two albums are right now. And one of those two you're not going to be mad at, and one of those two I have a feeling people are going to be really mad at, but it's just my honest opinion at the end of the day. Um, But I have It Was Written at number three. It Was Written has some of the greatest rap songs ever. The Message, I Gave You Power, Take It In Blood, um, If I Ruled The World, Silent Murder. Incredible. It's an incredible album. It's an incredible album. Um, I think I'll I'll get into my number two. So so my number two is King's Disease 3. And the reason why I say that is I want to talk about why I put King's Disease 3 over It Was Written. Because a lot of people are going to see that as blasphemy. It Was Written is a classic. It is one of the best rap albums of the 90s. Um, But my reasoning for putting King's Disease 2 in my personal ranking over It Was Written um, is just based off the fact that It Was Written... Not every song do I love equally. I, although I think every song on it would it was written is great. There are songs that I love less than others. King's Disease Three isn't really like that. I mean, King's Disease Three, I love damn near every track at an equal level from the start of the album to the end of the album, with the exception of Serious Interlude. And um, there's not many albums like that where I can say that I love basically every song. Um, and King's Disease Three is like that. So, and also I think it's 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 a it's a good bookend um, on Nas's career. We get Nas's early early career masterpiece, and in my opinion, his late career masterpiece. I I, I think King's Disease Three is. I think it should go down as a classic. Do I think it's going to? I don't know. I mean, only time can tell how people are going to look back on King's Disease Three and how much they enjoy it. But I think it's going to be looked. I think it should be looked back on as one of Nas's best albums. Um, in his discography when given some time, obviously by me ranking it here at number two. Um, I tried not to let nostalgia get the best of me, and I tried to just be honest, which of these two albums do I really prefer to listen to? Which one do I really think is better, more well-crafted? And, you know, if, I, if I'm if i being honest with myself, I just, I have to give the edge to King's Disease 3. And Obviously, I haven't played King's Disease 3 more than it was written. It was written has been out since 96. 96. King's Disease 3 has only been out since last year. But, man, have I played the crap out of King's Disease 3 in this past year. Um, It's an extremely impressive album. It's a super fun album, which Nas doesn't normally have, like, fun albums. So this was a really charismatic and bright album for Nas. Um, I think he's... In peak form lyrically, I think songs like Michael and Quincy, um, Once a Man, Twice a Child, Beef, Don't Shoot, I think songs like that um, really just show that he 
is still capable of getting into his songwriting bag. But I think the this is one of the best produced Nas albums um, ever. So, yeah, King's Disease 3 is incredible. I know it's going to be controversial. I know it's going to piss some people off. And I might even, if you give me a week to get the rose-tinted glasses off of King's Disease 3 because it came out so recently, you know, maybe I think I'm crazy and maybe I do move... Um, Maybe I do move. It was written back up to number two. But as of right now, I got to put King's Disease 3 at number two, man. I'm blown away by that album. I really love that album. Um, yeah, I think it's incredible. Um, and, and that leaves the obvious answer. Uh, number one, Illmatic. And that's that's no fun. You know, everybody puts Illmatic at number one. But I think, I mean, that, that happens for a reason, right? Like, it is arguably the best rap album ever. If, in my personal opinion, it's probably my favorite rap album ever. Um and it just has so many iconic songs on it in a short track list that it's like when you have nine songs total and like eight of the nine are all time great rap songs. Um, that's really, really, really impressive. Um, and I think that's why Illmatic gets ranked so high as often as it does and why I'm going to rank it so high again here. Um yeah, man, go off on me in the comments below. Tell me how stupid I am for having uh, King's Disease 3 above It Was Written. You know, I don't even necessarily disagree with you. I think, I think, you know, give, given some time, maybe two weeks from now, I, I watch this video and I'm like, damn, I put King's Disease 3 above It Was Written. I might think I'm crazy, but that's how I feel right now, man. Like right now, I really do feel like King's Disease 3 is my second favorite Nas album. Um, and I think the Nas and Hit Boy run is going to be looked at as such a legendary run in hip hop that I feel like the quintessential album, which from that run, which in my opinion is King's Disease Three, is gonna just be extremely fondly remembered um, because of that. So, yeah, man, that is my top my top twenty Nas albums to recap. Nostradamus at twenty, Nostradamus at twenty, Streets Disciple at nineteen. Nasir at 18, Lost Tapes 2 at 17, Life is Good at 16, uh, Untitled at 15, Hip Hop is Dead at 14, King's Disease 1 at 13, I Am at 12, Distant Relatives at 11, Magic 2 at 10, Magic 3 at 9, Godson at 8, um, King's Disease 2 at 7, um, Stillmatic at 6, Magic 1 at 5, the Lost Tapes at four. It was written at three. King's Disease three at two. And Illmatic at one. Even just saying King's Disease three at two, so it just it feels off to me. And I think it's because it's just such a recent album. Um, I think putting it above the album that like quintessentially people view as Nas's have people have viewed it was written as Nas's second best album for almost two decades now. Um, or really, actually, I'm sorry, for almost three decades now. And so I think just putting an album that came out, you know, less than a year ago above it sounds blasphemous to me. But right now, if I'm being honest, I do think I would put King's Disease 3 above it was written. I think I like the album more at this moment in time. Um, yeah, so that is my honest ranking from 20 to 1 of Nas's discography. Let me know below um, what what rankings you thought were just really blasphemous and really ridiculous. Let me know below what are your favorite Nas albums or how would you rank the whole discography? If you guys want to put your whole ranking down below, do that too. Um, but yeah, man, I'm going to do more of these ranking videos. I'm going to do a discography ranking video probably for like Aesop Rock next. I want to do one for Jay-Z. I'm want i going to do one for everybody. I'm going to do one for uh, people outside of hip-hop as well. I'm going to do discography rankings for people outside of hip-hop as well. But yeah, man, um, a long video, but a worthwhile video in my opinion. Nas, the greatest rapper of all time. Um, I have a new mixtape out. Las Sombras uh, dropped yesterday. Um, so go listen to that. Go listen to my other album that came out earlier this year. Um, I appreciate you guys. Go follow my TikTok. I post a ton of videos about my record collection on TikTok. So if you want to just see my record collection a little bit more in depth, uh, make sure to go follow me there. Other than that, I appreciate you guys for watching. My name is Kenny Moss, and I'll see you guys next time.